Today, we are looking at the gradient descent algorithm. You can see here that I have a surface plot of a given function. With some initial conditions, gradient descent will find us the minimum of this function over the given domain. We're going to be focused on the algorithm in this tutorial, but we need to first start with some mathematics. Let's take a look at the simple two-dimensional case to start, where y is simply a function of x. The next value in x will equal the current value in x minus gamma times the gradient of f of x. Now this term here is probably confusing, let's break it down. The gamma is simply a weight. Sometimes in machine learning, it's referred to as the learning rate. This upside down triangle is called the gradient, and we're taking the gradient of our f of x function. f of x will be something like one plus x squared, or seven x minus four. This is just our function that we're looking to do gradient descent upon. This gradient operator is essentially and can roughly be understood as the slope vector of a function. Since we're just in one dimension, it does essentially equate to the slope. And you can see we write this here as the partial derivative of f with respect to x, which in our case with two dimensions is essentially the rise over run. Then we can come down to calculate the new y value because we can plug in the x value that we just found into our function. When we expand this into three dimensions, we now end up with z, the height on that plot I showed earlier, is a function of x and y. It's the same mathematical equations here, just written because now we have an x and y point at each location. And the gradient here becomes a partial derivative with f with respect to x and f with respect to y. Now this requires some calculus to actually do these. I'll also show you how MATLAB can do these partial derivatives for you. We get the new x value and the new y value, and then we calculate the new z value by plugging the x and the y into our function. That's all the math we're gonna do. It's important to level set. Now we're going to go into the algorithm and do this in MATLAB. Here we are in the MATLAB IDE. This entire function can be found on my GitHub. Check out the link in the description to get access to this. No point in rewriting it. Feel free to use it for whatever you need. Let's walk through the basic parts of this function. First thing we have to do is define our f. Here in terms of x and y, it's gonna be one quarter x squared plus y squared. This is what you wanna change per your application. Feel free to mess around with this. I've defined it here as an anonymous function and then again using the symbolic math toolbox. You may need to install this if you don't have it currently on your system. This is optional if you want MATLAB to solve your derivatives for you. Otherwise you can do the analytical expressions and hard code them into MATLAB. I basically made this entire thing symbolic by using the sims command and defining these three symbolic variables which I use in this equation. The next step is to get a visualization of this main function. It's important to know what we're working with. I've defined the domain here in x and y, created a mesh grid, calculated the z using our anonymous function, and then made a surface plot from there. That gives us this basic plot without the red. The next step is applying the gradient descent algorithm that we just talked about in the PowerPoint slides. Here's the general form right here. Keep in mind that alpha is our learning rate and we'll tune this in a little bit. First thing, let's get these partial derivatives. And we can do this analytically with pen and paper, or I'm gonna use MATLAB to show the capability. The symbolic toolbox has this diff command where you can put in the function and the variable you wanna take the partial derivative with respect to. So here, this is the partial derivative of the function f of s with respect to xs, which I defined right here. I'm doing the same with y as well. 
So now we have these partial derivative terms in x and y. However, they are symbolic expressions, so I'm converting them back to anonymous functions. So I can simply plug in values into these and I'll get answers out. And I have those stored in the gradient x and the gradient y variables. Now we need to start developing the data points that we're going to be plotting. And I'm storing these in a matrix called points. The initial x, y, and z positions are all stored alongside each other in the first row and then in positions 1, 2, and 3. Notice I'm using the function here that I defined, f, the anonymous function, in terms of x and y. I've set the initial learning rate, here it's alpha, you can make it gamma or whatever you want, as 0 0.1. When it comes to the algorithm, I'm going to use a while loop. We're going to loop until our error becomes very, very small. And I'm considering it's not quite error, but it's gonna be the difference between the previous point and the current point. So once that difference becomes really, really small, then we're going to stop the loop because basically we're not progressing anymore in between points that we're seeing. So I'm calculating the error between consecutive points. At the start, this is a very big amount, so we'll keep looping the differences get smaller and smaller and smaller until we ultimately end the algorithm. You can tune these values as well. The smaller they are, the more iterations your algorithm will take. The first thing we do here is calculate the next points in x, y, and z. We'll use the i plus 1 notation to store it in the next value in points, take the current value, and then subtract off alpha times that gradient term with our current point as the input for both x and y. Then to get z, we do the same thing. We just plug in f with our new points that we just solved for. So here we get the new x, y, and z. Pretty straightforward. Then we need to update that difference term that we just talked about that the while loop evaluates by taking the absolute value of the difference of the next point minus the current point in both x and y. I have a counter, so we know how many times we're looping through this, and we increment that counter. And then I have a final break statement here, just so the while loop doesn't go indefinitely. So right now I'm breaking it. If we do about 200 loops, then I say stop. We don't need to keep doing this. Of course, you could increase this if you anticipate there being more iterations while you're running the code. The last thing I do, I use scatter3 to plot these different points here, and that gives us the red dots on our plot. Then I've provided a couple outputs here so we can see how many iterations it took to reach our final target or until the algorithm stopped, and then I just output the final point because that's ultimately what we're looking for in gradient descent. I can go ahead and run this, and this is our output. What you may need to do is train or modify your alpha term. Right now it's 0.1. Let's see what happens if I make this 0.5. You can see we have that same initial starting position up here, but we actually converge the solution much quicker and fewer iterations. Here you can see it only took 19 iterations versus the original 60. You might think this is a good thing, and in some cases it is. This parameter should be tuned for optimal performance. But you'll notice if I make this too big, such as, let's say, 0.75, now we're kind of half piping <laughs> throughout this. Here we start at our initial condition, but we overshoot all the way to over here, and then we go back, 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 back and forth. This is undesirable behavior when we're doing our gradient descent. We want a nice, simple path towards the solution. And in certain circumstances, if we made this an alpha of one and ran this, we'll actually never find the solution because we keep going back and forth at the top of this peak. 
you can see we took all of 200 iterations, but it's saying that the final point is not at the very bottom of the curve because we simply couldn't get down that far based off this learning rate. I found that 0 0.1 tends to be a good fit in this case. And you see we have a nice descent towards the center. That's basically the meat of the algorithm. If you're looking to do gradient ascent, I have another video on that. Check the link in the description. It's a very similar algorithm with just some signs flipped around. If you want to do this on your own functions, remember you'll simply need to come up here and change what functions you're working with. You can also hard code in this section if you don't want to use the symbolic variables and the symbolic toolbox in MATLAB. You can just explain what is this grad function in terms of x and in terms of y. Thank you so much for watching. If you need any help with this at all, go ahead and drop a comment. I'll be sure to help you out. And again, all this code is on my GitHub. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching and have a great day.